What if I told you that there's a single Python feature that could eliminate 70% of the repetitive code you write every day? A feature so powerful that once you master it, you'll wonder how you ever coded without it. Look at this mess. Logging statements everywhere, timing code scattered around, authentication checks repeated in every function. What if all of this could become this? Welcome to the world of Python decorators, your code's new superpower. Let me show you a real scenario. Imagine you're building a web API and you need to log every function call. Now, you want to add logging. The naive approach would be to add print statements in each function. Can you see the problem? We're violating the dry principle. Don't repeat yourself. Say you have 100 functions like these in your code. You could manually add logging lines to every function, but that's a nightmare to maintain and it clutters up your clean code. But what if I told you there's a better way? We can use decorators. Think of a decorator as a smart wrapper around your function. It's like putting your function inside a gift box that adds extra functionality without changing what's inside. Our log function call decorator takes a function as an argument and returns a new function, the wrapper. This wrapper function is the one that actually gets called. It adds our logging statements before and after calling the original function. We use args and quargs to make sure our wrapper can handle any number of arguments the original function might have. Just like that. One decorator, infinite possibilities. But how does this actually work? Here's what's happening behind the scenes. The at symbol is syntactic sugar. It makes our code cleaner and more readable. When Python sees at log function call above our get user data function, it's actually just a shortcut. It's the same as saying take the get user data function and pass it as an argument to log function call, and then reassign the result of that call back to the name get user data. This is the real magic of decorators. They allow us to add new, reusable functionality to functions in a clean, elegant, and non intrusive way. But the real power? We're about to unlock it. Let's build a decorator from scratch. I'll show you the exact thought process. Our goal is to create a decorator that can time how long any function takes to run. This is a super useful tool for performance monitoring. We start with a basic function, simple greet. If we print this, the output will be simply, hello, Python developer. We then build a decorator function called timer decorator. This function takes another function, func, as an argument. Inside timer decorator, we define an inner function wrapper. This wrapper is where all the magic happens. It records the start time, calls the original function, records the end time, and then prints the difference. Finally, the wrapper returns the result from the original function call. The timer decorator then returns this new wrapper function. You might have noticed the line at wraps func. This comes from the func tools module in the Python standard library, which provides higher order functions and operations on callable objects. This is a crucial little detail. Without it, our decorated function would lose its original identity. If you tried to check the name of our decorated greet function, you'd get wrapper. But thanks to at wraps, the wrapper function borrows the original function's name, doc string, and other important metadata. This keeps our decorated code easy to debug and introspection friendly. By simply adding at timer decorator above our greet function, we've wrapped it with new functionality. Now, every time we call greet, our decorator runs first, times the execution, and then returns the original result. This demonstrates a key software design principle, separation of concerns. We've separated the core business logic of greeting a person from the cross-cutting concern of measuring performance. This makes our code clean, modular, and reusable. See that? We added timing functionality without touching the original greet function. That's the power of separation of concerns. Here's where it gets exciting. Let's build an authentication decorator for a web application. The requires off decorators wrapper function acts as a gatekeeper. Before the original function is even called, our wrapper checks if a user is logged in and properly authenticated. It calls a hypothetical get current user function to see who's trying to access the resource. If there's no user or the credentials aren't valid, the wrapper stops the process right there by raising a permission error. This prevents unauthorized access. If the user passes both checks and only then, the original function is executed. Imagine implementing the security check manually in every function. With decorators, it's one line per function. Let's build something that will actually speed up your code, a memoization decorator. Memoization is an optimization technique that stores the results of expensive function calls and returns the cached result when the same inputs occur again. 
Our memoize decorator has a cache dictionary that lives outside the wrapper function. This means the dictionary persists between calls to the decorated function. When you call the decorated function, the wrapper first generates a unique key from the function's arguments. It then checks if this key already exists in the cache. If the key is found, a cache hit, the decorator immediately returns the stored value from the dictionary. It completely bypasses the original function's execution. If the key is not found, a cache miss, the decorator runs the original function, stores the result in the cache under the new key, and then returns the result. Run this and you'll see the first call computes everything, but the second call is instant. You just turned an exponential algorithm into a linear one with one line. With this code, we can barely see the difference. To show you what just happened, let me use the timer decorator we built earlier. Now, if we run this, check the time it takes. The first call takes time because each subcall is a cache miss. The memoize decorator computes and stores the result for each one. The second time we call the function, the outer timer decorator is called, but its inner function immediately finds a cache hit in the memoize decorator. It returns the result instantly without ever reaching the original Fibonacci function again. That's how we transform a slow, exponential process into an instantaneous lookup. Cool, right? Wait, did you notice what we just did? We used not one, but two decorators on a single function. That's right, we had at timer decorator and at memoize stacked on our Fibonacci function. This isn't a coincidence. It's a powerful feature called decorator chaining. So how does Python handle multiple wrappers? Which one runs first? And what if a decorator needs to accept its own arguments, like a configurable log file name or a number of retries? Let's dive into these more advanced scenarios and unlock the full potential of decorators. So when you stack decorators like this, Python applies them in a specific order, from the bottom up. Think of it like a layers of clothing, where the last decorator you put on is the first one you'll take off. The decorator closest to the function, at log function call, wraps the original function first. Then the decorator above it, at memoize, wraps that entire result, and so on. But what if you want to customize your decorators? Sometimes you want a decorator to be more flexible, accepting its own arguments. This is where parameterized decorators come in. They're a little different because you need an extra layer of functions to handle the arguments. A parameterized decorator is essentially a function that returns a decorator. The outermost function, retry, takes the decorator's arguments, max attempts, and delay. It then defines and returns the actual decorator function, decorator. This decorator is what will receive the function you want to wrap. The decorator then defines and returns the inner wrapper function, which contains the logic for retrying the function. When you use at retry max attempts equals 5, delay equals 2, you're not calling the decorator directly on the function, you're first calling the retry function, which uses your arguments to configure and return a new decorator. This newly created decorator is then applied to your function, just like our simpler decorators before. This pattern gives you the flexibility to create powerful, reusable, and customizable wrappers. A great real-world application of a parameterized decorator is rate limiting. Many APIs restrict the number of calls you can make in a given time period to prevent abuse and ensure fair access. Our rate limit decorator protects your code from hitting these limits. This decorator uses a sliding window approach. It keeps a list of timestamps for the most recent calls. When the decorated function is called, it checks the current time, then removes any timestamps from its internal list that are older than one minute. This cleans up the window. It then checks if the number of remaining timestamps is less than the calls per minute limit you set. If the limit hasn't been exceeded, it adds the current timestamp to the list and allows the original function to run. If the limit has been reached, it raises an exception, stopping the execution and preventing the API call from being made. This is a fantastic example of a decorator's power. By using at rate limit calls per minute equals five, you're adding a sophisticated production ready feature to your code with a single declarative line, all without ever touching the core logic of the call external API function. While we've been using Python's syntactic sugar with the add symbol, what we've really been doing is implementing the decorator design pattern. This is a well-known foundational concept in software engineering, and it's not unique to Python. The decorator pattern is all about extending an object's functionality dynamically without modifying its core code. It's built on a few key ideas. Let's understand with this example. One, component. This is the base interface or class that defines the core functionality. In our code, component serves this role. Both the original object and the decorators will implement this interface. Two, concrete component. This is the original object you want to extend. 
our concrete component is a basic class with a simple operation method. Three, base decorator. This is an abstract class that holds a reference to a component object. It also implements the component interface, allowing it to act as a stand-in for the original object. Four, concrete decorators. These are the classes that add new functionality. They wrap a component object and add their own behavior to the operation method before or after calling the wrapped object's operation method. Our logging decorator is a perfect example. It adds logging without altering the original concrete component class. The core principle is to wrap an object with a new object that provides additional behavior, all while maintaining the same interface. Python's add syntax is just a beautiful, concise way to express this powerful and universal concept. One of the most valuable benefits of decorators is how they promote separation of concerns. This is a design principle that breaks down a program into distinct features that overlap as little as possible. Look at this code with and without decorators. Without decorators, our process user data function is a classic monolith. It's a jumble of different responsibilities, checking for authentication, logging, validating input, checking for rate limits, and executing the core business logic. This approach makes the code difficult to read, hard to maintain, and nearly impossible to reuse. If we needed to add validation to another function, we would have to copy and paste the same validation code. If the logging format changed, we'd have to update every single function. But with decorators, we've extracted each of those concerns into its own dedicated decorator. At Authenticate handles all authentication logic. At Log Calls manages all logging. At Validate Input ensures data is correct before processing. And at Rate Limit enforces API call limits. Our process user data function is now clean, focused, and only contains its core business logic, updating the user in the database. All the surrounding cross-cutting concerns are handled by the decorators. This makes the code significantly more readable, maintainable, and reusable. You can now apply any of these decorators to any function with a single line of code, allowing you to easily build robust, well-structured applications. Now that you've mastered the concept, you'll start to see decorators everywhere, especially in modern Python frameworks. Like in Flask and Django, web frameworks. Decorators are fundamental to routing and security in web development. In Flask, at app.route slash API slash users is a decorator that maps a URL to a specific function. We can then add our own at auth required decorator on top of it to ensure that the route can only be accessed by authenticated users. In Django, decorators like at login required and at require HTTP method add essential security and validation checks to views, ensuring that a user is logged in or that a request uses the correct HTTP method. Also, in PyTest testing framework, decorators are used to parameterize tests. The at pytest.mark.parameterize decorator lets you run a single test function multiple times with different sets of inputs and expected outputs, which is perfect for testing a function like double with various values. These examples show how frameworks use decorators to keep your application code clean and focused on its core purpose. Once you see the pattern, you'll recognize the power and elegance of decorators in all sorts of applications. Before you go decorator crazy, let me save you from some common mistakes. Let's look at some common pitfalls to avoid when using decorators. Knowing these will save you a lot of debugging time. First one is forgetting at wraps. This is the most common mistake. When you create a decorator, the inner wrapper function replaces the original function. Without at wraps, the decorated function will lose its original metadata, like its name, doc string, and argument list. As you can see, myFunction.name incorrectly reports wrapper instead of myFunction. This can cause issues with debugging tools, testing frameworks, and documentation generators that rely on this metadata. Second one is overusing decorators. Don't decorate everything. If a function only needs the behavior once, just call another function instead of creating a decorator. Third one is complex decorator chains. While decorator chaining is a great feature, too many layers can quickly become unmanageable. A long list of decorators on a single function makes the code difficult to read and debug. It can be hard to understand the order of execution, especially when some decorators are parameterized. Here are the golden rules for decorator mastery. The first golden rule of decorators is to adhere to the single responsibility principle. Each decorator should do one thing and do it well. The log execution time decorator has a single clear purpose, to time a function's execution. It doesn't worry about logging, authentication, or anything else. This makes it highly reusable and easy to understand. The do everything decorator is a tangled mess. It mixes logging, timing, and authentication, making it difficult to debug, modify, and reuse. 
If you needed to change the authentication logic, you'd be forced to modify a decorator that also handles timing and logging. This is exactly what decorators are meant to prevent. Good decorators are flexible. By making them parametrized, you can customize their behavior without writing new code. The log2 decorator is a perfect example. It's built with an extra layer of functions so it can accept an argument destination. This one decorator can now log to the console or a file simply by changing the argument. This design makes your code adaptable and powerful. Just like any other function, decorators should be well documented. Without documentation, it's hard for other developers and your future self to understand what a decorator does, what arguments it accepts, and how to use it. The solution, use a doc string to explain the decorator's purpose, its arguments, and provide a clear usage example. This ensures that your code remains understandable and maintainable in the long run. And that's the magic of Python decorators. They're so much more than just a fancy at symbol. By understanding them, you've unlocked a powerful tool for writing clean, reusable, and maintainable code. Remember, they're not just Python syntax. They're a fundamental design pattern that you'll see in frameworks and libraries all over the programming world. So go ahead, start using decorators and unleash your code's true potential. If you found this helpful, give it a thumbs up and share it with a fellow developer who's tired of repetitive code.